Hey, I'm Brad and welcome to Overkill Global, Banger TV's international heavy metal review show. This week we're reviewing some awesome brutal death metal records from Indonesia. I'll be giving you my personal essential albums and we'll be hearing from a local expert who will give, you know, an overview of the scene. As always, thank you so much to our fans, our subscribers, and our Patreons for their viewership, their subscriptions, and their input on this. This is very much a community driven show. We couldn't do it without you. So stick around till the end of this for some Patreon donor shout outs, as well as some uh, shout outs from a few special, uh, special people that I messaged. <laughs> All right. So I had to look up Indonesia to find out what is super cool, super metal about it other than the music. So first off, the Komodo dragon comes from there and these badasses are the biggest lizards in the world. They reach nearly 10 feet long. And I mean, I don't think dragons really need more proof of like metal cred, but you can totally read about how deadly they are. They got the venom and bleh. It, they, they can kill a human. They, they can and do. Komodo dragons eat people. Wait, what? They eat people, which is so special. And I found this gore grind project that's called Komodo Nisia. Uh, they, they notably have an album, it's like five minutes and 45 seconds. It's called The Story from the Komodo Dragon and it's, uh, it's pretty filthy stuff. So Komodo Dragons, definitely metal. Next up, there are 139 volcanoes in Indonesia, apparently 127 of which are active. And this one volcano that erupted back in 1883, e like emitted the loudest sound ever heard. Apparently it like ruptured people's eardrums up to like 40 miles away or something. So, so all these awesome metal bands from the area are really just playing catch up to this volcano from 1883. Apparently no one can agree on how many islands comprise Indonesia. Estimates range from around like 13 and a half thousand to 18.3 thousand. However, less than a thousand of them are permanently settled. That means there are plenty of unnamed islands and I am proposing that we name at least five of them after the following bands. And there are gonna be other bands, there are gonna be shout outs, so we could really fill out a lot of these names. Indonesia, if you're watching this, take our, take our names. So part of Overkill Global is to talk to somebody who lives there, who's really like absorbed this culture. So this is our expert on Indonesian brutal death metal. Hello guys, my name is Devi Permadi. I do vocals in Kadapura City and in Terpet Domains. Both are brutal death bands. Me and friends also make Indonesian death metal community. We start with an online forum. You can visit at indonesiandeathmetal.com. You know, Indonesia is an uh, island country, that's why we separate by thousand thousand islands. That's why we need a room to get together, to sharing something, to talking shit, to promotions and all that stuff. We actually not stopping there, we also make Indonesian death metal compilations. The chapter one is done about three years ago. We already thinking about making the second one. We also make an uh, Indonesian death metal show, we call it Indonesian Death Fest chapter. Kind of like mini tour of Indonesian Death Fest. For example, the show in Bandung is called Indonesian Death Fest chapter Bandung, and Indonesian chapter, Death Fest chapter Jakarta, Indonesian Death Fest chapter Bali, and so on. Thank you so much for that, and now we're on to my reviews. These are my personal recommendations for five essential Indonesian brutal death metal records. They're not ranked. This is chronological according to order of release. So first up, we have Rotten Corpse and their album Maggot Sickness, which came out all the way back in 1996 on Graveyard Productions. So this is touted as the first death metal full length by an Indonesian band. Apparently in Indonesia they decided to skip the whole proto death and you know straight up death metal and just went straight for, for the brutal shit, which is a good indicator of where their scene would go and how prominent brutal death would be. It's really as far as you know death metal, it's it's the pinnacle of the scene there. 
And it's remarkable to me how advanced this album is for, for a first. You know, it, it, it came relatively soon after the advent of this genre. Like, I, I don't fully know how music traveled the planet back then, probably tape trading and, you know, mailing it all over the place and pen pals or whatever, but, but consider that early brutal death metal releases from the likes of like Suffocation, Broken Hope, Pyrexia, Internal Bleeding, Mortal Decay, all that stuff. I started like pumping out like between like 91 and like 93 and 94. So less than five years after this music kind of reared its ugly roaring head, this music made its way across the world, like far across the world, and was adopted like very faithfully and, and, and remarkably well. So this album isn't as much uh, suffocation style, you know, suffocation are known for being brutal, but also for, for being technical. This is more in line with those, those other bands that I mentioned, you know, Pyrexia, Internal Bleeding, etc., etc. I mean, hell, the second song on this album is literally called Broken Hope. That song has some, some Slayer vibes, as does the, the solo in its predecessor, the opener, Rotten Solid Brain. The middle of this album starts to trend a little bit more to the suffocation sound with the title track and, and mind dominated kind of exemplifying this, but that's more of like a, like a taste, not the overall uh, overpowering flavor. The closing track, Mindless Tentacles, has this like, dun, 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 you know, like the hammer smash face, like kind of chug straight into, you know, like more of a riff and generally just feels, you know, like that kind of more primitive era of Cannibal Corpse, the early stuff that's a little bit more leaning towards brutal than technicality. Honestly, as a whole, this album is just a lot of fun and again, remarkable how well put together it is considering the genre was quite young and I don't know how long it takes took back then for music to get across the world, but I'm gonna give this one four to five skulls. All right, next up we have Jassad and their album Witness of Perfect Torture, which came out in 2001 on Rochrevor Records. <laughs> another classic of the scene which is still relatively early in its life cycle you know this is about five years from the first LP it is simultaneously more sophisticated than its predecessor and more primitive at times there are more suffocation vibes at others it almost feels like there's a like a gore grind underpinning here it's kind of like a prostitute discernment in a way uh, it's just unhinged madness I suppose another touchstone here could be early deeds of flesh which was you know, unhinged, but methodical, technical, but rough around the edges. The album opens with these burpy vocals that sound really ominous, perhaps because of the, the piano that's played underneath them. The omen is a good one though, as the vocals continue in a similarly raw, albeit more uh, squealy direction throughout the album. It's the kind of monotone delivery that never gets boring. <laughs> the track, Urine Campur, Nana -na has, um, I'm, I probably butchered that, but it's got such a sick groove which could rival some of Dying Fetus's best. And Dying Fetus are like groove masters. This, the straightforward, chunky, trem picking that opened the title track, it's, it's really savage, as is the dizzying transition that follows. This is a track that, that dares you to bang your head along, then makes you, you know, start and stop and adjust your pattern all over the place. But you won't mind, because again, Fun to listen to. These guys are amongst the forefront of the overall scene. Guitarist Furley actually took over this label, Rotrevor Records, back in 2011 when Rio passed. So this is a very important band, a uh, very important collective to this scene. This album is really cool. For that reason, I'm giving it four out of five skulls. So we're fast forwarding a decade here for Brain Ass and their album Primordial Uncouth, which came out in December 2011 on Extreme Souls Production. Singular, not productions, production. One, but they've released more than one production, so weird. <laughs> Nobody. 
know I had to do it with this band based on that name alone. I mean, come on, that really catches you. You know, you want to check this out. When it comes down to it, a brain does kind of have a crack down the middle of it like a butt. So brains kind of look like butts. I'm sorry, they're right. Anyway, I'm trying to get through this review without repeating too many comparable bands. You know, I don't want every single review to say, this sounds like suffocation. This sounds like dying fetus. I don't want to use all the same band names. So that being said, this album reminds me of early decrepit birth and, and some, some disgorge, you know? The best part of brutal death metal is that it is so often technically proficient as all hell, but it doesn't feel like wanky, just hits like a damn steamroller. The song The Unclean Comes slows things down for a bit for the intro. The groove makes the blasts that follow hit extra hard. At two and a half minutes, it's the second shortest song proper on this album, not including the intro, yet it's one of the more diverse. Other than that, some of the main breaks on this listen come from orchestration and samples. This song, and I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, but Surga Hitam starts with like farm animals and orchestration. And this song, Psycho Freak Species, begins with rain and this quote, I am growing stronger until I possess my full power you will be my weapon. And I have no clue what that's from. I Googled it, couldn't find it. Sounds like some Mortal Kombat kind of shit. These are two of my favorite songs on the album with Surga Hitam just like full bore brutality and Psycho Freak Species hilariously possessing more of a nuanced attack. You don't expect that from a Psycho Freak Species. Mutants attacking stuff, ripping heads off, you know? Anyway, there are more progressive moments that remind me of Suffocation on this. I know, I know, I said I didn't want to keep repeating the bands, but Suffocation are like fathers of the genre, so I have to bring it up. And some of these songs have, the, you know, the start and stop chug of Dying Fetus. I repeated bands again, I'm the worst, I know. Anyway, despite appreciating the, the brief respite that these orchestration samples, etc., offer, it really kind of breaks the immersion in the album and stunts the overall flow. So despite having a slight problem with the flow, as a collection of songs and an indicator of the quality of brutal death metal coming from Indonesia, this is a solid release. So overall, I'm giving Brain Ass three and a half skulls out of five. <laughs> this is what a brain ass looks like apparently. All right, next up we have Perverted Dexterity and his album, Spiritual Awakening, which came out November 2017 on Severed Records. <laughs> because Perverted Dexterity is a solo project from a guy named Ryo, who also plays in a bunch of bands like Cat of Veracity, Urged, Blood Driven, and more. Those are just like the brutal death metal ones. He's got black metal bands and a bunch of other ones. He's a prolific musician. So I wanna take a moment here to highlight a few other killer solo projects of Indonesian brutal death metal. Uh, this band Menstrual Disconsumed is insane. The cover art for his album, Consuming the Infinite Rancidity, is just disgusting. This band Ilium is also rad, though the art on unexpected deteriorating have auction is kind of goofy. Dude, brutal death metal titles are insane. So this is the album that I'm most excited to talk about here. The album art is so far from your typical brutal death metal territory. It features some, you know, hook-nosed goblins not that far off from like a golem from Lord of the Rings. And according to Encyclopedia Metallum, the band sings about prehistoric and primitive living as well as like brutality, barbarity, and gore. The latter part of that, which I'm assuming is just part of that early way of life when humans were apparently not homo erectus or whatever. They were actually goblins. We came from goblins, apparently. Uh, which makes perfect sense given I'm a fucking goblin. This album really reminds me of Putridity and their album Degenerating Anthropophagical Euphoria. In fact, that album started playing immediately after this one on Spotify. So the hive mind knows and agrees. The vocalist on that album, Paolo Chitti, who now sings in Devangelic, 
also guests on the song Misanthropic Reflection. Other guests include Deddy Permati of Cataverosity, Interfectorment, Interfectorment, and formerly Asphyxiate, as well as Julian Fadil of Apoptosis Guthrectomy and Psychophagia, and Surachet Suntharasri of Imbrood Blemishment. I think it's like a workout having to say all these band names in a row. It's like a tongue twister, but they pull your tongue out, twist it, and then they chop it off and say, fuck you. As far as the overall sound here, beyond just putridity, there's some brodequin in here, there's some devourment, some defeated sanity. In other words, this is both modern and old school, technical, yet really like grounded and rooted and really fucking fast. The drums are just like this constant cascade of blast beats and the album flows together remarkably well. Despite being at 11 almost the whole time, restraint is used throughout. Burpee vocals pop up occasionally, prominently on Perfidious Elder, which ends with some dissonant riffing, as well as on Closer of Vile Omniscience, as well as Demoralized to Preserving Abolishment, which is featuring Surachet Santharasri, as well as Misanthropic Reflection, again, that features Paolo from Putridity and the Evangelic. Look, that song, Misanthropic Reflection, is just the song on this album. It's also endemic of their use of squeals. So this album ain't slam, it's definitely brutal death. And that's because slam parts punctuate without permeating too heavily. They're more so used as transitions than monuments or like focal points, you know? The slammiest song is the closer and the abundance of slams, gurgles, and atmosphere at the end of this blast fest of an album serves as a nice, palette cleanser. It's very refreshing. Perverted Dexterity released a new album this May called Alacrity for Contemptuous Dissonance on Brutal Mind, and it apparently closes out this trilogy that he started out with debut LP Primitive Scene of Inhumanity and continued here. I'm gonna have to dig into that whole story and world because I just love everything about this album, about how the art is so different from, from your typical, about how everything flows, the vocals, the blast beats, the unrelenting assault. I just love this album. And for that reason, I'm giving it five out of five skulls. Goblin skulls. Closing out my picks, we've got Historexis and their album Maggots Infest the Limb, which came out January 2021 on Dismembered Records. <laughs> albums for this final pick between this one and Calera's Theophobium Excruciation, which I love that album's like evil cover art and dark atmosphere. However, this one just is as filthy as the unnerving album artwork would make you feel. This is the least musical album on this list, and I mean that as a compliment. The vocals are seriously insecty, seriously froggy, somewhere between a frog and an insect. Maybe it's like a frog stuck its tongue out, grabbed an insect, and then they duetted or something. Seriously clicky stuff, kind of like, you know, Last Days of Humanity. It's also the slammiest album on this list, oftentimes just, you know, dropping down into these filthy, breakdown-esque passages, which are accentuated by what I just mentioned, the pingy snare, which makes every hit just pierce your eardrums, and the clicky vocals. So when I'm talking here, my vocal cords are going like or whatever they do, right? And when they're doing these clicky vocals, it's more like and that resonance just makes everything noisier in the breakdowns, in the slam parts, and you're just like You just got boiled alive like a frog. Although apparently, that boiled frog thing, myth. You know what's not a myth though, is how sick this album is. And for that reason, I'm giving it four out of five skulls.
So after explaining some choice picks for this, I'm here to explain overall what I learned about Indonesian brutal death metal. First of all, everything that you've heard about Indonesian brutal death metal, its quality, its prominence, uh, is absolutely true. There is just a dearth of bands there, and they're all seemingly at least pretty good. You know how for there to be life, you need like an environment to support that life? Well, I guess in the music world, that kind of means record labels to support the bands, and there are a lot of those in Indonesian brutal death metal. So we've got Rotrevor Records, Extreme Soul Production, Dismembered Records, Disembowel Records, Wahar Records, which is like W-A-A-R Records, uh, Groupies Merch, and, and tons more that are helping keep, you know, brutal death metal alive in Indonesia and exporting it to the world. The amount of bands is also absolutely ridiculous, and, and the quality of those bands. I mean, seriously, there were a bunch of other bands in serious contention for this list. It's uh, remarkably an interconnected scene given, you know, a lot of this is on individual islands and whatnot out there. And apparently they all love Brutal Death. So we've got some shout outs here. First up from a couple of my homies and then from our Patreons. We've got an honorable mention here as chosen by Cannibal Cam, who selected Decayed Flesh and their album Eternal Misery, which came out June 2020 on Brutal Mind. And then we've got another honorable mention chosen by Trevor Sternad of The Black Dahlia Murder. He chose Siksakubar and their album The Carnage, which came out in 2000 on Extreme Souls Production. Now on to Patreon, we had a pick for Gore Infamous and their album Cadaver in Methodical Overture, which came out October 2012 on New Standard Elite. They actually have a new album out, which is their first LP. They released it independently, so go check out Ex Keiko Deconception as well. Actually, there have been plenty of long-standing Indonesian brutal death metal institutions that have started to release their first like proper releases in years. This year, I guess quarantine is being good for Indonesian brutal death. So I'm going to list off some of those. First up, we have Kata Verocity and their album Vitiosis Forma Exilum, which came out in February 2021 on Unmatched Brutality Records. We have Asphyxiate and their album Altar of Decomposed, which came out March 2021 on New Standard Elite. We have Viscral and their album Entrance into Terrifying Imagery, which came out April 2021 on Black Angie Records. We have Garogat and their album Heading to Eternal, which came out June 2021 on Brutal Mind. And finally, Digging Up dropped the split with Consumed in March on Brutal Mind. Plenty of these bands have been around for years in that scene, and it's just so cool that we've gotten such a glut of new music from them, new albums, new EPs, new splits, not just singles, proper bodies of work. There is no shortage of bodies of work when it comes to Indonesian brutal death metal. The bodies are all dead, they're all cut up, really decaying, bloody. You don't wanna look at them. Close your eyes, listen to them. You're gonna have a good time. Plenty of brutal music from this scene. You should definitely check it out. I want to go visit sometime.